with a first look at the closed door testimony in the impeachment probe. Among the many revelations, ousted U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine Marie Yovanovitch told lawmakers during her October deposition she felt threatened by President Trump after it was revealed that he told the president of Ukraine that she would, quote, go through some things. She was asked during the deposition, what did you understand that to mean? She replied, I didn't know what it meant. I was very concerned. I still am. Did you feel threatened? Yes, she replied. There were also other concerns from the former ambassador's safety. When asked if Rudy Giuliani came up in her conversations with Ukrainian officials, she highlighted a February conversation saying a senior Ukrainian official was, quote, very concerned and told me, I really needed to watch my back. When asked to explain, she mentioned Giuliani. His now indicted associates, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, and ex-Ukrainian prosecutor Yuri Lutsenko, saying they were, quote, interested in having a different ambassador at the post. There's also this. Yovanovitch testified that she asked U.S. Ambassador Gordon Sundland for advice on how to handle attacks from Sean Hannity and Don Jr. She told lawmakers Sundland said, quote, you need to go big or go home. You need to tweet out there that you support the president and that all these are lies and everything else. She said, quote, it was advice that I did not see how I could implement in my role as an ambassador and as a foreign service officer. There was also another reference to Sean Hannity. His attacks apparently went from Fox News primetime to the top of the State Department. Yovanovitch said she was told the secretary or someone around him would call Hannity to see if he had proof of the allegations against her, and if not, to stop it. Hannity claims the call never happened. And here's what the president said about the former ambassador when questioned by NBC's Kristen Welker. Was Marie Yovanovitch the target of a smear campaign by your really ally? She testified she was. But if you was. look at the transcripts, the president of Ukraine was not a fan of hers either. I mean, he did not exactly say glowing things. I'm sure she's a very fine woman. I just don't know much about her. But President Trump told the president of Ukraine in that July 25th call, <laughs> quote, the former ambassador from the United States, the woman, was bad news. And the people she was dealing with in the Ukraine were bad news. So I just want to let you know that. Uh, Elise, I mean, first of all, let's just back up to the beginning here. Um, it feels like this ambassador was having a brother who served as an ambassador and a father who worked in foreign policy. This is chilling. These people put their lives out there, up and their lives, to represent the United States of America. They, to say that she's going to go through some things, I don't know how to read that any other way, that he's going to shake her down as well, scare her, threaten her, do something to make her life miserable. You have the president of the United States literally bullying an American diplomat posted abroad in a hardship post. And this really puts into harsh focus the crisis that's happening right now at the State Department. Mm -hmm. You've got Mike Pompeo out campaigning in Kansas. There's going to be a congressional investigation and in why he keeps going to Kansas and not going abroad. Mm -hmm. And you have all of these crises happening, not just in Ukraine, but around the world. And what is happening with the State Department? Who is running the State Department? Who is protecting the State Department employees who have vowed and who've taken an oath to their country? It's certainly not Mike Pompeo right now. And, uh, you know, it's hard to believe, but there might be a larger story than the threats to the ambassador, to Ambassador Yovanovitch, and it would be the slow destruction of the State Department as evidenced Meeker, in the release of these transcripts yesterday, Ambassador Yovanovitch gets a phone call at 1 a.m. Ukrainian time from the uh, desk, State Department desk in Washington, a woman telling her that she had to catch the next plane home for her security. What in the world? She could not decipher what her security meant. She tried to elicit a response. She never got one. You also had Michael McKinley, 37 years in the Foreign Service, indicating that he asked Secretary Pompeo three times uh, to stand up for State Department personnel, Secretary Pompeo indicates, no, I never, he never talked to me. John Heilman, uh, the phrase goes around and around and around. Elections have consequences. 
We're seeing this play out in real time now with the destruction of a single department, the State Department, that is key to the United States' role in the world. Uh, it's been, Mike, I think, uh, you know, w one of many institutions of the federal government where, you know, Steve Bannon said he was, uh, the one of the missions of the administration was the deconstruction of the administrative state. They were serious, and it's ongoing. Steve Bannon is long gone, and yet the administration continues to do it. I just, to Mika's point and to everybody's point here, you know, you listen to what the president's saying there. We, we have heard President Trump use this language, you know, to attack the deep state, attack uh, the institutions of government. But the way in which he singles out this particular ambassador to an, for another head of state, mm. he sounds like not like the president of the United States, not like an even very partisan member of the United, president of the United States. He sounds like a crime boss. Yeah. Uh, he, he sounds like someone who is, if you're in a Bourne movie, you know, if you had the head of an international crime syndicate calling the, the president of a, of a second world country and is making direct threats upon one of the United States representatives there, someone who he, of course, the person works for him, right? And so you imagine, you take this to the human scale, you imagine what this woman was going through Horrible. as she was sitting there in Ukraine listening to the president of her United States, hearing that that president, the person she's supposed to work for, she's worked for other presidents before, hearing that he's talking about her as if her life was in jeopardy. And I, it's so far beyond... I mean, there are moments, there, there's so much that's horrific about the way Donald Trump talks about uh, the government that's there to serve all of us, to there to help the world, and there to serve him. There's so much of it that's horrific, but there are moments like this that really crystallize mm -hmm. just the extent to which yeah. the president is behaving Sworn like testimony. not just a bad president, and not just a partisan president, and not just a narcissist, but as I say, like a criminal in the White House. And this is not the first person who has testified uh, to this framework, to this narrative about the Ukraine scandal under oath, and the president thinks the whistleblower is his problem. That's a distraction he's putting out there for Fox News. That's a distraction he's putting out there to try and make that the focus of the story. There are way too many facts. I think it's fair to believe the facts, as they add up, might prevail, Willie. And then she's confronted by the ambassador to the EU, who theoretically should have nothing to do with the conversation about Ukraine. And so there is a way out of this. If you write a nice, flattering tweet wow. about President Trump, you maybe can save your job. To her great credit, she refused. And to not, just save, your not just save her. your job, but just imagine this part of it. She basically is saying, hey, you got to, state media is out to get you right, right now. That's what that is. That's the, that's, that's the, that's the, you know, what, what happened with TASS, you know, in, in right. the Soviet Union in 1974. It's like state media is turned against you. The only way to get the guys in state media to back off is to offer a sacrifice to the gods. It's the, all of the, the Fox News stuff of this is so troubling, especially when we start with the whistleblower discussion, because you heard Sean Hannity last night on Fox News threatening also to yep. to reveal yeah. the whistleblower's name. And you, you, we are headed to, I mean, we are already in a very dangerous place, but with respect to this whistleblower, the, com, the kind of the nexus between the White House and Fox News on the foreign stage, on the international stage like this, is again, it's beyond mind blowing. And remember a time when everyone was really concerned about Benghazi and did the State Department, mm -hmm. did Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, did the Obama administration do enough to protect Ambassador Stevens and the other diplomats serving at that hardship post? And we literally had the President mm -hmm. of the United States targeting mm -hmm. an ambassador. You had the threat coming in from the desk at the State Department. Diplomatic security, what are they just being left out there you know, protecting an ambassador and left out high and dry. This is just, it is, it's criminal. Get, get, but can you imagine, get on the plane. Yeah. Why? Why don't you need home. to get on the plane? Well, you need to get, on, you need to get on the next plane home. Your safety depends on it. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.